Good evening. I'm District Secretary Nancy Gamble Hatfield. It is Tuesday, October 22nd, 2013, and this is a special meeting of the Dublin San Ramon Services District Board of Directors. Presiding this evening is President Bob Benson. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome back, Nancy. District Secretary, roll call, please. Director Pocket. Here. Director Howard. Here. Director Duarte. Here. 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 Okay. Public comment. We'll wait. We have a speaker card, but we'll wait for uh, board business. Okay. Well, that brings us to number five, board business. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to welcome up Daniel Smith. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to introduce the fifth turn it over to approve this <laughs> supplemental agreement to agreement for wastewater disposal services between City of Pleasanton, Dublin San Ramon Services District, and to provide direction to Durwa representatives regarding Durwa Pleasanton agreement. Thank you, President. Chief President Engineer. Of the board, do you have before you tonight the supplemental agreement to the regional agreement is recommended for approval. Also, is recommended to the director representative the Durwa. To vote on next Monday night, the Dura and Pleasanton agreement, and uh, those go forward on the 5th of November. The City Council will consider approving the agreement. Uh, these agreements are really actually very valuable to both us and Pleasanton. Uh, for Pleasanton, it's their least cost alternative to get recycled water to the city, so they save a substantial amount of money. For the district and Dura, there's cost savings with us because of a number of fixed costs that will get spread out over additional areas that be beneficial. You need to be aware, however, that even after the agreements are approved, hopefully, on November 5th by Pleasanton, they will not take effect until Pleasanton completes their environmental process. They have to look at all the alternatives and consider them to building your own plant, not doing recycled water, and they can't bias that process. But assuming they they are able to adopt what their favorite project is that the agreements would go in effect. The agreements do have some minor cost association. They're simple, but minor cost associations. The biggest thing it does is it provides pleasant and effluent that they're not using, makes it available for us to process recycled water to turbo. You will see there is a $125,000 payment to Pleasanton for what we call the integration benefit cost. That really does a couple things. First of all, I mentioned the, the agreement wouldn't go effect until the EIR is done, maybe several years. That's in recognition of the value that we get of using their water during that time period before they benefit from the contract in one element. As a side note, I talked to Mr. Smith today, who's in the audience, and, and he and I have worked together on a draft letter for the city manager to send us, which he says he will do, assuming his board is uh, council takes action on the 5th. That, that allows us to use the recycled water until they actually complete the IR and, and the agreement comes into effect. The other benefits that are integrated into this is one, there's a section of the clean water pipeline from Toss Arrow Creek out to south of Fallon Road that we're not using. It allows Pleasanton to use that and pay us the lease payment for the amount they use it. That allows them to complete a loop and be able to serve both ends from our treatment plant. Although today they are receiving water from, from Livermore that end and they may do that forever but we're tied into Livermore so and essentially that pipeline ties all three systems together which is also a reliability benefit and then they're going to use Tossar Reservoir which is an eastern Dublin our service area for recycled water storage it has excess storage so part of the agreement is if we want to build facilities to use that storage for ourselves the excess storage we can and we are somewhat storage, storage short in Eastern Dublin. They struggle a little bit hot summer with the golf course and everything, make it a little worse as we get near build out demand. And so there's a benefit for us. And of course, the overall benefit is it improves the reliability of the public water system in the valley because it takes the load off the public water system. Zone 7 will be using it. There's Zone 7. Pleasant will be using this to get towards their 20% by 2020 per capita reduction. But just be more potable water available for reliability purposes or for future growth. 
So with that uh, background, we certainly would recommend you approve it. I would point out that uh, your general manager did most of the heavy lifting. I did mainly did the go for work around the edges. And he, did, they all put he did all the dirty work. <laughs> Every time I needed a hard message to deliver it, I went to talk to him. He found a nice way to deliver it. Yeah, day is pretty good. <laughs> Dave, have you heard, are there any concerns that Pleasanton thinks could happen with the environmental review? We don't think so. I mean, historically, the, 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 there's two potential issues. We think there's not a big problem. What we've seen and heard, I've had the opportunity to go with Daniel to talk to some of the business areas that are going to be using the water, they're all, all for it. There's the, the concern that salt, the main groundwater base, and it irrigating over the top of it is a concern to some people because there's a small increase in salt in the recycled waters compared to potable water. That, that's one potential issue that Zone 7 concerns citizens, very real low need, even Alameda County Water District could bring up. That's one. And then the other one that I'm sure that Pleasant will have to address that we all do is what I call the zero molecule people. You know, one molecule of recycled water that might reach the groundwater basin at the end of the world. But having said that, the lawyers, if they put together the language, kind of flush that out to their knowledge of environmental process, what's going on in the valley, and they don't see any real uh, concerns for Pleasant being successful in the process. Okay, good. We'd like to have uh, Daniel come up. Daniel Smith from the city of Pleasanton, welcome. Glad you're here tonight. Great, thank you very much, President Benson and board members. I appreciate the opportunity to address the board for a few minutes. And I'd like to start out by thanking my two partners here, uh, both uh, Bert and Dave, for the process that we went through. And I know, I think all of the staff over the last year and a half in some way or another has been involved in this process. And, I really appreciate your patience and your diligence in doing that. Uh, Pleasanton obviously is looking very forward to this. I think Dave talked about the major points. Uh, one thing I would like to add to what he said about the environmental is one of the things we did in the very beginning was involve Zone 7 in this process because we thought it was important with us being over the groundwater basin that they were a partner in this from the very beginning. So as we did our feasibility study, we invited the zone to participate in that. Uh, so I think most of those issues that could potentially come up, we've worked through those at this point. Um, the other thing that Dave touched on that I'd really like to point out to you that I'm really excited about is the regional integration aspect of this. You know, from the very beginning, one of my goals was to purchase water from DSRSD that you could treat for us and from Livermore. And in the beginning, people said, well, why would you do that? Well, because then there's more for all of us. So by integrating the pipeline, the reservoir, and doing that, I think it benefits both of our agencies greatly. It helps us reduce our cost per acre foot. It's taken a long time to get here, but I think the positive with that is it was done very diligently, and I think we came out with a better agreement. So Pleasanton really hopes that you approve it. Uh, we met with our committee already, our council committee, and they approved it to go forward to our council on November 5th. So we're looking forward to approval. Um, just if I could add one thing about Dave uh, doing the dirty work. Um, you know, I got to tell you, we're all going to miss Dave. And I know that you guys are really going to miss Dave. But we're going to miss Dave, too, because he really took me under his wing. And I appreciate all the work he did. Good job. Excellent. Thank you. Do you have any questions for me that I could answer? No, we're just thankful. And um, please extend our best to the council and to staff for for your extraordinary efforts. So um, we're looking forward to a long partnership. Great. Thank yeah. you guys too. All right. Thank you, Daniel, for coming. And President Benson, if I could add two things. One, um, I've been trading emails off and on over the years with uh, former and longtime uh, board member Jeff Hansen. He saw that this was coming up, so he asked me to pass along uh, the following uh, to the board and to the public and, and to Pleasanton as well. It's even you were going to be here, Daniel. Uh, the Pleasant, and I'm going to quote directly from his email. The Pleasanton deal is truly a long time in the making, but definitely worth it. I want to compliment everyone involved for so long, Derwa, East Bay Mud, Pleasanton, and the district for implementing what is obviously a win-win governance and environmental success. And I especially want to compliment me and Dave for staying with it all these years. If you get the chance, please pass along my heartfelt congratulations to all involved, beginning with the board tomorrow night. And as have you heard me say many times before, this is an idea whose time has come. 
and you know that that that's from Jeff. So please take it. And then for, I'd like to offer a few comments. First of all, I, I too would like to thank everyone involved for the vision and patience we uh, had with each other. As you all know, water deals, whether they're in this valley or in California, are never easy and are, are never quick. They're always a long time coming. And I'd like to, Daniel, especially uh, extend my thanks to you for the approach to, that you somehow found to make this work um, in the face of a lot of history on all sides of the relationship here. So uh, it was very much helpful in drafting this agreement. I think without that sort of spirit of trying to find a solution, we wouldn't have gotten there. And uh, my advice to everybody here and, and to the board is, to, you know, just like our staff is transitioning now, I think now is a time that uh, everybody in the Valley needs to start transitioning um, to the future and let bygones be bygones and let's look to the future. This is the start of that. Yes, absolutely. You toast to us all. It's a good collective effort. Well, thank you. Of course, it's also bittersweet because uh, this is our true last meeting with uh, our district engineer at the house. If I may, before we get to that, uh, sure. may, may I make a motion, please? Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to make the assumption that we can dispose with our uh, closed sessions. Mm -hmm. These I'm going to make a motion to approve item 5A as written. Um, you know, even though we have a lot invested in lava, a lot of lava, I'm hoping that this is the first step in putting lava into an emergency mode. I mean, if Livermore doesn't let us all get on board together, there may be a time when we're sending very little of our water over the hill of the bay and we're using it all here beneficially in our valley. This is the first step of that, I think. Anyway, I make a motion to approve. Okay, do we hear a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Wow, was that resounding? Yeah. <laughs> Take a bow. All right. Now you have. Okay. At this time, I'd like to give the floor over to our district engineer, Dave Rico. It's a security check. I kind of miss the old days of being able to come up here and put a lot of slides up and try to baffle you with baloney rather than the fact. <laughs> I know the board has uh, decided that, that maybe it's safer just to let us give you a few facts and make up your own mind without it. Let's try to sell you. But I want to come up here tonight. To, well, first of all, who knows, maybe my last public speaking engagement. But more importantly, I want to come up here out of respect for the board, senior staff, and the district. Because, uh, this is a really the place to address you with, with respect. You know, I've had a really fun and four-year-plus career. Study. I worked uh, from, you know, Eureka to San Diego, from Reading to Bakersfield, from uh, Auburn to Bear Lake, around the country, Alaska, all the way to uh, New England. But you may not know, you know, I've been here over 18 years, but the district has been woven into my whole career. You may not all realize that. When I went to work for Black and Beach, I was there probably a week, maybe two weeks, and one of their principals grabbed me and said, kid, it's time to learn how to chase work, okay? And so I drove with him to this place and met a guy called Paul Ryan, <laughs> who was, had an RFP on the street to build a pipeline over the hill to San Francisco Bay. Well, needless to say, I got a lot to learn about getting jobs because we didn't get the job. But, in my career as a street agency at Southern Marin was one of my major clients. A major treatment plant, a pipeline, almost as long as lava into deep water outfall. So it was quite a project. Well, they got a new general manager just about the time that we were getting ready to go to bid. That general manager happened to be a fellow named Bob Bradford. Georgine may recognize that, but he was the Ed Cummings of the first lava construction project. So he had a lot of stories about the district. And soon after we arrived, our, our, I was going to be involved, responsible for the construction as, as I'd been for the design, but he wanted an independent construction manager, and he hired a fellow named Joe Cavello. And of course, you know, Joe well enough that uh, he filled me in regularly on the affairs of the district. So I was really involved in. And then you may not realize it, but I was a sub-consultant to Bob Whitley when he was actually hired as district engineer. And I did a number of projects for the district then, including owner's representative for the stage 3B expansions that I was able to continue. Mr. Hayashi let me continue and finish it when I moved on to Union Sanitary District. And just for you, Rich, 
the, the project was tight on funding, so the board was very careful when they awarded it. Well, by near the end of construction, they had excess funds, they were okay. So they gave me a $150,000 changeover authority to do landscape. So anyway, we can do that. And then, you know, as history shows, Bob Eby came up and knocked my door at the uh, Contra Costa Water District and said, you want to come down and build, try to build this clean water revival thing? And I said, sure, why not? I like building things. That's all. You know, 18 and a half years ago, that's that's what I got here for. So, you know, I, I my goal, of course, you know, when I got in the public sector was the gold ring and to become a general manager. And I tried a number of times. I was bridesmaids a number of times. In fact, I had the bridesmaids twice at DSRSD. In fact, I may have been the maid of honor twice. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, last time around, they picked Bert. But I have to tell you, I have to really thank Bert. You know, given that, he could have really been suspect to me, made life miserable. I mean, you know, pretty easy reaction, right? He gave me, by far and away, much more authority and autonomy than I probably deserved in the whole thing. You know, and, and he always listened to my opinion. Once in a while, he even agreed with me. <laughs> <laughs> even on occasion, he'd come and ask my opinion on something. And so that, that, was, that was nice. But what I enjoyed most, you know, I'd be sitting in my office, and Bert would come in and close the door, and he'd bend about something that was bothering about what was going on with the district. Of course, it was never about a board member. <laughs> 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 You know, I like to lean back in my chair and smile and say, you know, Bert, it's time like this. I'm glad you got the job. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, Bert, I have to thank you for allowing me at the last stop of my career to have a fun, exciting, and challenging uh, time. So you're thank, you're thank you very much, Bert. You're welcome, and thank you. Yeah. And then, you know, with regard to you as a board, and, and I, I make these comments to you individually, but the previous board meeting members, all the board members, some of them took a little training to get them there, but all the board members here really act like board members. You stay up at the high level, you know, rarely get down in the weeds. I've been with boards where, I, I was at one board meeting with one of my clients where the board argued for a half hour on who was responsible for a one PVC valve breaking in the system. Uh, I know Dan's went into those things in his career. And I don't think that the, the public out there that may be listening to this really appreciate the challenges you have of, you know, you've got the old PERS requirements, you've got the legal requirements, you've got the MOU requirements, and in all that mess, you want to maintain uh, qualified and good staff. And on top of that, as we know, there's competition in the Bay Area. I mean, yeah, this is, from a financial point of view, you'd like to cut engineer salaries in half, but you know what? Other people aren't going to, and they wouldn't be here. So you really have a challenge, and I don't think that the that the public really appreciates what that challenge is. And I don't think they appreciate how much you really do part the message to your staff to be cost effective. You know, there's things you gotta deal with that are cost effective. So my hat's off to you, and, and I particularly my hat's off to you to thank you. You know, things don't always go right. Things go sideways. You're a board that when something goes wrong, you stand up and say, what can we do to help? You don't spend your time looking for who's, who's responsible. How do, we, how do we move on? How do we go about so, so I really appreciate that. And, you know, sort of a, I, I got something. How many of you recognize the tree? Huh? Oh, you know, this is the landmark tree of the district for many, many years until, until it broke and fell down. And one of uh, the employees that retired paid me something from that tree. And I thought that maybe at this occasion it was probably more important for the district to have this rather than me to tote it home with the knickknacks and stuff I have in, in my uh, office. So, what he did is he turned a gavel and Mr. John Hawk retired, <coughs> retired from the literal position here in the district. And so, that is, that is cool. It turns from the tree out, out front, so I thought it would be something that the district got to have. That's cool. Now that is a treasure. <laughs> And so with that, I certainly appreciate, I guess, one of my long-term partners and the only one left at the moment, but as you probably recognize, all the four people that sat there kind of had a little different personality. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you know, we always found a way to work together and get things done. And you know, and, you know, once in a while, Bert had to herd cats, and he did what he had to. So I thank you for that. 
first Mr. Mahalachek, or as he would say, just simply Bert. Thank you. And thank you, the board, very much. And as they say, da -da -da, that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me, I was thinking of Dave Waiting, and I thought about Willie Nelson song. Why are we not surprised? Mamas don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Don't let them pick them guitars and drive them old trucks. Make them doctors and lawyers and such. And I was thinking, I don't know your mom and your family, but somebody taught you the middle road be the cowboy and the doctor and lawyer. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's very unique. Uh, you know, it's kind of um, special. <laughs> and I really appreciate that. Um, I've enjoyed working with you all these times. And, uh, and you are the guy that's both the cowboy and the doctor and lawyer and such. And it's been fun. Um, you're a very special person, and I appreciate having you. Thank you. Any other comments? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I'm really going to miss you. I really am. You know, you've always been someone I could call upon and, and get, whether I liked it or not, the truth. Um, I think it's going to be difficult for the staff for a while because you probably were the peacemaker around here. I know you definitely were when it came to Pleasanton. Um, I'm really thankful for that. As you well know, that battle has gone on for more years than you and I together are old. Um, and if we can begin putting all of that behind us, that would be great. But I wish you the best. I hope you'll come visit. And please consider the Lavma job. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that was coming out. <laughs> well, I think, I think Daniel's right on the path. Very natural. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Anybody else? I have no, no idea where change order authority. I have no idea where we are on the agenda. Um, <laughs> I think we're public. Um, that, doesn't really, that doesn't really matter. Um, I think I'm going to miss you. Yeah. I'm normally pretty, pretty quiet during our member items. And Dave, I truly will miss you. You're cherished. You, I've always sought your opinion. Um, and you will be forever treasured in our hearts. Thank you. So think about that lot. <laughs> well, Dave, uh, we've only known each other uh, 14 months or so. And one of the best things I've enjoyed about you is every time we get together and talk, if I, and I have a question about the operations and, and from the construction side, right away you and I know what we're talking about. And mm -hmm. that connection was very quick, very early, and, uh, and very greatly appreciated. Um, I don't have the history with you that everyone else does. But uh, it was very easy for me to see your impact of what you've done in the district, and uh, I'm going to miss you too. So thank you. Stay connected. Got us to drink the recycled water. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, I just got to pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that. So thank you so much. We appreciate everything you've done, and your, um, well, your ripple effect will be forever rippling through this agency. So. With that, I would like to um, adjourn the meeting. It's 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? Yeah, it's 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing our closed session here. Is this a special closed session? <laughs> the record is like the meeting was adjourned 7, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that, I'd like to um, end this meeting with our uh, support and in Dave's honor. All right. Using our new gavel. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank you.